Welcome to another episode of Software Explorations, Concept and Overviews. So today we are going to be talking about retesting and regression testing. Why it's important, all that good stuff, right? But before we get into that, um, of course, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. And have you checked out the Patreon yet? If not, give it a look. See all the valuable information that, that's in it, that's going to be in it. For example, the... Uh, the slides that I create for these software explorations, um, you'll find you'll find all of them in there. And copy the slide, make adjustments to it, change the background, use it for your own presentations, whether at work or in a class, in a boot camp, whatever the case may be. It's yours as long as you're part of the Patreon. You can do whatever you want with it, and we can go from there. But let's get back to regression testing and retesting, and let's find out what it is and why it's important. All that good stuff. So regression testing and retesting, two of the most important parts of the testing aspect of the software development lifecycle. And why is that? Well, let's find out. Right. right here, right here. Okay, cool. So the topic is retesting and regression testing, and we're going to be getting into everything about that. So what's our agenda for today? We're going to be going over understanding re retesting, demystifying everything around regression testing, the role of automation testing in this process, combining retesting with automation, integrating automation with regression testing, overcoming common challenges that we normally face, real world use cases, and best practices. Let's get into it then. What is retesting? Retesting the software testing process that focuses on verifying that a specific defect or issue identified in a previous test cycle has been successfully fixed or addressed. It involves testing the same functionality or area of the software where the defect was found to ensure that the reported issue no longer exists. So let's break it down to make it a little bit simpler, right? Pretty much when you're testing software and you find an issue, a bug or a defect, right? And you send that to the to the software engineers to get fixed. Once they fix it and they send it back to you notifying you that it's been fixed, now you must go and you retest, as in the, the name says, you retest what was the problem. You follow the steps that was causing the problem to make sure that that defect, that bug is no longer existing right so it's gone it's everything is working fine now software is good we um or at least what you reported has been fixed and um it doesn't cause any user issues and you can move on why is retesting important well number one like it's the verification of the bug fix like the most important part is the verification of the bug fix you you reported it and now it's, they say that it has been resolved. So now you go back uh, across the same steps that you did and you make sure that it's fixed, right? Simple as that. It's also for quality assurance to once, it's part of the quality that um, the software should be working as intended, you know? So when the, when the defects have been resolved, part of the quality assurance process is to make sure that Everything is working as expected. Um, so that is also part of the importance. Another very important part that kind of mixes into the other aspect of this of this um, software exploration is it prevents regression, right? And what does it mean by it prevents regression? Because we do want to run regression tests, but that's a different type of regression. The preventing of regression is from, is going backwards, you know, Progress is to go forwards, regress is to go back. So we don't want the we don't want the software to get worse. We want it to continuously get better. 
Okay, so the we we do the retest because we we can't just take um, somebody's word because not that they'll be lying, but they might miss something. They might make a mistake. They might they might have misunderstood the uh, the problem, right? So we don't want to be going backwards. Once we find an issue, we want to get it resolved so we can prevent regression of the software, right? Now, there's also about user satisfaction. If a user is unable to check out or unable to log in, um, that's a pretty big defect on an application. So, and that's going to lead to bad user satisfaction. When it leads to bad user satisfaction, then they're going to go on Yelp or on in the in the um, in the reviews and say that oh, the software doesn't work. It, it caused this and this problem. All of that stuff, right? So we need to do our best to prevent user dissatisfaction and increase user satisfaction, okay? Next thing, comprehensive testing. Uh, we, we just need to be very thorough, make sure that everything is on the up and up, everything is working as it should be. So re retesting includes to the comprehensive testing strategy that we employ. It also has a use for documentation. The documentation, it's it's very good for us to have the documentation to say um, this is a problematic area that we fixed and we have um, we've addressed it, all of that, right? But it's also important because depending on the industry that you're working with, uh, let's say it's in the healthcare industry, right? The the FDA, for instance, they might they they would want documentation of when there was an issue and how that issue was resolved, all of that. And it can also be used for, like, if you have to show the testing that you did to to clients, you know. So it's very important in that aspect as well for documentation. Documentation is key, very, very important, okay? The next thing, is, it's cost-effective to, to retest because it prevents issues from lingering on that can cost the, the company a lot of money, right? It can't even put a number on it because it can be a lot of money depending on the severity of the issue. So at the early stages, like, during development, you find the issue, and you report it, they say it's resolved, you retest it because if that issue gets to, to production, the further away that an issue gets from, from development, the more expensive it's going to be to the company. The last thing is risk reduction because what do, what do um, defects cause? They cause risk because they... They can have different levels of severity, and you might think that a a defect is not as severe until it starts affecting other things that you might have not thought of. So, retesting, verifying that a bug has been fixed, that a defect has been fixed, it reduces the risk to the company by the the, the consumer using the application in a way that it wasn't necessarily intended. But now that it puts a lot more exposure, it leads to possible um, user dissatisfaction. All the things that we mentioned above, by retesting, we continue we continually reduce the risks involved in it. Okay. Now we get to regression. What is regression testing? So simply, regression testing is a type of software testing conducted after a code update to ensure that the update introduced no bugs. So, how can we break this down? Right? It can be done in two ways. If we stick to retesting, after the fix is done for the defect that was reported, right, and we retested it and we make sure that that is working, right? The other aspect is now, how do we know that this particular fix did not affect all the other, like any other part of the application, especially the most important part of the application? That's where regression testing comes in. So we run regression test, usually automated, to, to make sure that everything is still working after this bug was fixed, right? And if something breaks, then it's a possibility that there's, there isn't the right unit testing in place to prevent when you make a change to fix something that something else doesn't break. There's also regression testing during the regular software development. Like when you add a new feature, we need to be able to run regression tests to make sure that that new feature doesn't um, doesn't affect the current functionality and cause other things to break because a lot of times with methods and stuff like that, code is being reused and it's very easy to introduce a new bug by adding a new feature and that bug will affect existing areas. So let's say you added some new feature for like a wish list on an e-commerce site, right? But the way that you get to the wish list, it uses some of the code involved in logging in and now a user can't log in 
and you didn't have regression testing in place. So you go to deploy and now you have the users have a wish list available, but they can't get to it because they can't log in. Right. So regression testing is to prevent introducing new bugs into the software. Now let's get around to this demystifying some of the thoughts and ideas behind regression testing. There's different types of regression testing, you know, uh, that you can have like a functional regression test. You can have a, a, a simple or smaller regression test, and you can have a, a full regression test, a, a comprehensive regression test. It, it depends on, it depends on um, this, the situation, the scenario that you're trying to accomplish, right? And that leads into our test selection techniques. So let's say you are running daily regression tests to make sure that uh, everything is like the most important parts of the, of the application is working. So you might have a, maybe more of a functional regression test where those run daily in maybe a, a production or production-like environment. And it's making sure that, you know, the, the core functionalities that what most users would be using all the time, that's, that's working as expected. Now, you can get to simple regression testing where it's, it's not too much of, you know, maybe it's some libraries that are being updated. It's not a full-on implementation. That's happening of, of a new feature, right? So you, in that case, you might want to run a simple version of the regression test. But let's say a whole new feature is being added and changes are touching everywhere. Then you would definitely want some uh, uh, the comprehensive, the full regression test to run on the application to touch all the little areas um, that, that you create a test for. And that will give more confidence in being able to release the, release the code, right? And, and that goes into the best practices of regression tests, uh, depending on the environment you're in, depending on what changes are being made, um, all that, that's going to be the type of regression test that you, that you run. Um, you, pretty much every time there's a code change, you want to run regression tests. And that leads us into automated regression tests because it's impossible to run all these tests on a manual, in a manual way, right? You need to be able to to trigger these tests to run and you get um, fast feedback. If something breaks, you get notified right away that something is broken in the regression test. So then you can look to see what's going on. That leads us right into agile and continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, continuous testing. Yes. Continuous testing is a thing, right? During, during the, the process, like when you are, um, let's say you're working on a branch with, with GitHub, or Bitbucket or something like that, right? Now you want to you want to run your your test in that environment on that branch to make sure that everything on the branch is working. Then when you when you merge, right, like to deploy, or well, when, when you merge to um, deploy your software, like you merge it into the master branch or the main branch. Now the test should also trigger, like a series of tests should trigger, right? Like the unit test, the API test, the um, the UI test. All of those are part of the regression tests and everything should pass when they're going to merge. You know, if that, if something fails, it should, there should automatically be a mechanism to roll back. Okay. So, and then there's some challenges that we also face with regression tests because especially when it comes around to the UI test, those tests can be a little bit flaky, um, like slower. It, a lot of things that depend on timing, but there's also the challenge of, getting to add the, the new tests during the software development cycle. And there's some ways that, that are around that, that um, I will most likely share on Patreon, you know, because um, that gets into like the nitty gritty. So if you're interested on how to handle the challenges, like, or the way that, the ways that I've handled the challenges with um, during regression tests, with things that are changing and adding new features, um, definitely sign up for the Patreon and there will be a video coming out for that. Now, what happens with code changes, right? Because a code change can cause a test to fail, but now you have to check if it's because you need to update your test because of the code changes or if there is an actual problem, you know, and that is that is a part of the critical thinking, the investigation part that that we have to, that we have to use, okay? What are some tools and frameworks for regression testing? Well, I think it goes hand in hand with um any other type of automation testing that you're doing, but Having, you know, so the basic Selenium web driver, uh, whether you're using Java or Python, um, you know, maybe test in G, um, or it just depends on what you're using, right? But 
there's and then there's also like rest assured for API testing if you're using um, Java, and then there is the request library for Python. You know, so all of those tools and frameworks. But it, but let's also add we need our CI CD tool, right? So you can you can be using Jenkins, you could be using Team City. Um, I've heard of Circle CI, many different um, tools that you can use for your for your deployment. Um, you'll need the right infrastructure to be able to run your regression test because you, you just can't use it off your local machine all the time. All right. So keep keep in mind that. And then we get into how do we measure the effectiveness of our regression test? If you didn't see the video on Report Portal, I think you should go check that out because that gives you some good metrics. Some, some It tells you like what tests are failing. It, it tries to, based on previous exp um, runs, it'll try to classify why a test might be failing. And um, it, it just helps you. It introduces AI, introduces machine learning into the reporting of your of your testing effectiveness, you know. And and that's good because if a change can be made and all the tests pass, then that means that some something right is happening. But we also have to go in and add the test for that for that um, feature. So we can't just rely on the existing test and not address the new the new scenarios that are be adding, right? And then lastly, we have regression tests versus retesting. They are two totally different things, although they um, they kind of complement each other, right? So with retesting, like we said earlier, we are going in and verifying that a defect that wasn't working before is now working. But with regression testing is we are making sure that everything continues to work as expected. So you can so let's say you find a bug and you report it and it gets fixed. First, you're going to retest it to make sure that it's fixed. Then you're going to run your regression test to make sure that that bug fix that the developers implemented did not affect or break anything else, which in my past, I've seen that happen. So you got to be careful to make sure that whatever changes that are reported to be fixed, they also don't affect any other software or any other feature on the site. Now let's get into automation um, when testing, right? So automation, like I'm a, I've been doing automation for the past 10 years now, right? And actually maybe more like 12 years. But automation inc increases the speed uh, and efficiency of the, of the testing process, right? Like you will hear a lot of people begging for manual jobs not to go um, to the wayside, but the time that it takes to run an automated test is... Might be might be like five ten minutes depending on the size, but for a person to use it, it might take them half an hour to half a day, right? It doesn't make any sense to do that way. So so in, in, so bringing in automation in the testing process helps us to to get results faster. Like so, you can be running like ten tests and, and one of them fail, you get you get notified of that immediately, so you can already start looking into it to see what caused it. Okay, and that goes to to the the early bug detection that's right next to it. You know um. When we run automated tests, we start knowing the results a lot faster than if we spent a week trying to go through and test a particular a particular uh, application. Okay, it increases the reliability and the consistency of the site of the test, right? Because it's, it can run the same exact things over and over and over and over again without having to try to like wandering off and like just like the, the human component of it. Of it's not like whenever there's human involved, even when you have the list of things to follow. It's not as repeat, repeatable and consistent as if you were to have it on a schedule that runs through these pages at a certain set of time, right? Automation tests also increases the comprehensive test coverage because you can run more tests in less amount of time than if a user, than if a, if a human being wants to do it, okay? Automation testing is a key resource for regression testing because if you have good automated tests, you can just run your regression test. And, and like that suite of regression tests, and it'll just go through everything that it, that you've coded it to do, and it'll give you a, you can have it give you a report of how everything went, right? And with screenshots, and if you're using Report Portal, then you can see it in real time and all of that information. So very very important. It also gives you the ability for data driven testing, where you can either have like, which this is bad practice, but having the the data hard coded, right? But I prefer to use like the a TestNG data provider where I will um, have it in maybe an Excel file or something like that, or a CSV. And then I would be able to pass the data into the test, right? 
and get the and then we get we have so we can run very like different variations of the of the same test with different with different data to see are we getting the right error messages or is it going through all of that stuff right and we already touched on early bug detection but yes um by running automated tests you start to know a lot sooner when there's an actual problem okay resource optimization now is from a human perspective you you don't need like a million manual testers that that will still won't get to every single scenario um and then like now let's say you, you want to run regression tests every single week it's just it just doesn't make sense that you'd have all these manual testers trying to trying to um run these tests manually the the automate the introduction to automation and testing has allowed has has allowed the industry to um save a lot of money and everything that's this below right the speed and efficiency especially the market the reliability and consistency all of those things right that 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 makes our resources so much better and now with automation testing it can you can have it generate reporting and documentation for you where it it can write the documentation in a certain way it contributes to the documentation by you can have results inside of the documents and it also gives can generate reports for you right so automation testing depending on how you build it it can generate reports then we get into scalability what scalability is like you can expand your test coverage right and it might even it might take a little bit longer to, for the test to run but it would be impossible for a human being to do it okay and then the with the with everything above with the early bug detection with the with the repeatability the consistency um, all of that, that leads to cost savings, to keeping the cost down, because like I said, we don't have an army of manual testers trying to hack away to, in a short amount of time, trying to find bugs. Um, we have, we have created a way that it will save you a lot of money and give you all the information a lot faster than if you're waiting around for a, a human being to do it. So what is the automation and retesting workflow? All right. So, the, so it pretty much follows this way, right? Usually a man through manual testing, you will find a bug, right? Now it's just sent to the to developers and they fix the bug. And then we, during that time, we should have created the automated test for that retesting scenario. So now we retest, we, we run our automated test and that passes, we verify the bugs are fixed and we get re we get rapid feedback if it's not, right? And then we can say, hey, this is not fixed yet or give it a, a thumbs up and we go ahead and we close out that that um, defect, right? But now it also it also fills into the continu to continuous integration and continuous testing because now that, that new automation test for the bug gets added to the suite and it gets tested and verifies that it works. And it helps us build out our regression test suite because as we add more more situations that we find, more scenarios, then our test suite gets bigger and bigger. So we have more comprehensive coverage, consistency, and re rely uh, and repeatability. Right. So being able to run the same test at the same time in the same manner, everything follows together. That increases the repeatability of our test, and it makes it more consistent. So we're, we're not like left in the shadows. Um, and, and everything is scheduled, right? And then there's efficient resource allocation because you say, okay, these resources are going to be working on this and like, and people are resources and the, the, the computers, the machines are resources as well. So you keep the, like the, based on how you configure it, you can keep your cost down on these efficient resources and, um, and, and things like that. So that, that part right there is a way to make your, um, your test as efficient as possible and as resourceful as possible. And lastly, it's hand, hands down automation and retesting co saves costs because you are able to run a lot more tests in a lot less time with a lot less people. Okay. So what are some common challenges around uh, retesting, regression testing, automation testing, right? So the test data management, um, it is tough because like, and, and I found a way to do it where um, I can create a spreadsheet and have the, the test that way. But 
a lot of times if a, if an issue is coming from production, it's so hard to reproduce the exact error that that user was having because we might not even have the right test data to match it. You know, they're just reporting an issue that they found. And then a lot of times the, the test environment is not configured um, the same way that it is in production. So it makes, it makes it hard to replicate. It makes our test a little bit off, right? Then there's also updating um, test cases and maintaining those, right? So when that happens, um, so, so when, uh, like, if the application is changing, then, then we have to go back and we have to update the, the test cases and maintain that. Some people will archive that previous test case and create a new one, or some will just update it straight from there. So it just, it just really depends. But that is a, a very big challenge is ma maintaining the test case. Another issue is the stability, right? Because there's a lot, of, like, especially when we're, when, our, when we're automating the UI, not so much with the API, there can be so much test flakiness, right? Because you can have like A, B, and testing that you get different result, results, so you have to account for that. You can have that uh, it, the page takes too long to load, and that can fail. That can fail your test that way. So every time there's a failure, we need to identify what's causing the failure, right? And then another issue that can happen is, which it's not as bad as as, as a human doing it, but the testing time can take can take some time depending on how big your suite is. So if you had like if you had something to do, uh, you might end up waiting for your computer to execute the test, right? And then um, some of the test reporting and the analysis like they're to be desired um maybe it's because um we're not using the right reporting tools uh, or 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 you know maybe it's just part of the the test ex execution speed that we're trying to speed up right and then another issue that you you might come across is handling dynamic data um with the with the um like when you're when you're configuring your your test cases to be automated um, the way that dynamic data can, can definitely shift, um, you might not always have the same information available. So that's something that we'd have to look into. And lastly, test, test selection and prioritization. How do you know which test to run, right? Um, it, that one takes time. That one takes um, experience and critical thinking, but you just have to like see what is the change that's being made and what areas that are being affected. And then you look for those areas um, and, and you add those, the areas that can, that have those tests, you add them to the, um, the areas that have those tests, you, you add it to the, the, reg the regression suite and you prioritize those based on the, based on the, um, you prioritize those based on the, the needs of the company, right? What are some real world use cases? These use cases that are listed here, I, I've, they're personal experiences, right? So uh, I had an automated UI suite to validate 1,400 sites during uh, a lawsuit battle, right? And those tests would run like in four to six hours. So it would be impossible to, to validate. And I think we had to run them like three times a day as well, right? So it would be impossible to validate 1,400 sites three times a day in, in four hours, eight hours, 24 hours. It just wouldn't be, it wouldn't be happening. So we were able to um, run them about four times a day, like going early in the morning. So by the time we came to the office, um, we had our uh, we had our results, and then we ran it um, like around ten a.m. mid morning. So by two o'clock, it could be there. Then we ran it um, later on, and we had we, we ran it like maybe around four o'clock, and then we had somebody four hours later checking the results to make sure everything was still good, right? So and and that was the battle of lawsuit. The other the other um, Another situation was automating API tests to validate a, a thousand positive and negative scenarios. Because it's API, those tests took like 10 minutes to run. And um, every time there was a new change pushed, we would run those tests, we'd get the results, and we'd say, okay, this looks good. Um, make sure that we add the new scenarios to the test and let the developers know that things are working and they can, um, they can move to the next step, right? Another scenario, another use case, we we're testing an automated UI suite, but I used the API to stage the data for our, for the UI test um, in order for like to be, to make sure the software is compliant with the, with the federal government, right? So just different scenarios that I use in the real world that incorporates like the retesting, the automation testing, the regression testing. All right. So in conclusion, the integration of automation into retesting Bug fixes offers numerous benefits from speed and consistency to comprehensive test coverage and rapid feedback. However, it's important to acknowledge 
uh, the challenges that come with it, with it. Challenges like data management, environment configuration, test maintenance, and stability are real, but they are not insurmountable. All right. So that has been our presentation on retesting and regression testing. All right. Let me know what you think. You know, um, this is a very big part of QA, especially as a QA engineer, you're going to be retesting all the time um, and you're going to be running regression tests all the time. You're also going to be writing the regression tests, you know? So um, I hope, I hope like, I hope you see the value in this video, um, you know? So, and like I said, this, this presentation is going to be available for you to download in the Patreon. So if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and sign up for the Patreon and like the video here, share it with somebody, somebody who's going to find it useful, subscribe to the channel, and we will go from there. But until next time, friends, this is Tech Coach Roth signing off. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.